Mass spectrometry is an analytical tool of enormous importance for the sciences and is widely used in many areas of industry and academia. In its most simple use, mass spectrometry is simply a way to accurately determine the mass of a compound and is commonly used to help identify different molecules. It does this in three steps. Firstly, it takes a sample and ionizes it. It then separates the ions by their mass to charge ratio. Finally, a detector registers these ions and transfers the information to a computer. Let's firstly look at ionization. There are many different ways to ionize a sample, but one of the easiest to understand is electron ionization. This is an ionization technique where a molecule is subjected to high energy electrons that knock an electron off the molecule and form a charged radical. In a mass spectrometer, this is done by heating a filament wire parallel to a positively charged plate. Electrons are ejected from the heated wire and attracted towards this plate. A stream of the sample is channeled perpendicular to this electron flow, ionizing the molecules as they pass through. This can be seen here in a schematic diagram. The electrons used to ionize the sample are quite high energy, typically around 70 electron volts. This energy can not only form ions, but can also break bonds in the molecule and form molecular fragments. Let's take methane as an example. As an electron collides with the molecule, a single electron could be knocked off and form the CH4 plus radical. This is called the parent ion as it is simply the ionized form of the compound you are analyzing. The energy of the electron could however be enough to break a carbon hydrogen bond. This would create a CH3 plus radical. Likewise this could occur with the breaking of two carbon hydrogen bonds forming a CH2 plus radical. These CH3 and CH2 plus radicals are the fragments that will be detected alongside the parent molecule in the mass spectrometer. Now the ions have been formed, they need to be separated. As with ionization, there are multiple ways this can be achieved, however one of the most common and easy to understand is time of flight. This involves accelerating ions and letting them separate as they reach different speeds down a flight tube. Let's look at this using the methane ions we've just formed. Firstly, we want to consider the mass of each fragment. This is easily done by adding together the atomic mass of the constituent elements of the fragment. Carbon has atomic mass 12 and hydrogen has atomic mass 1. The CH4 plus parent ion hasn't lost anything, so it will have the same molecular mass as methane, 16 AMU. The CH3 plus fragment has lost 1 hydrogen, so its molecular mass will be 15 AMU. And the CH2 plus fragment has lost 2 hydrogens, so it will have a mass of 14 AMU. The time of flight mass analyzer works by accelerating these ions in an electric field. All ions receive the same amount of potential energy from this electric field, which is converted to kinetic energy. The ions then travel down the flight tube, known as the drift region. The ions separate out because the heavier ions will reach a lower speed than the lighter ones. In the same way if you kicked a football and a bowling ball at the same time with the same amount of force, the football would fly off much quicker. At the end of the drift region is the detector. The detector is simply a metal plate that when hit by an ion gets a small charge induced. This is then discharged to give a current proportional to the number of ions hitting the detector. This allows the data to be supplied to a computer. This type of detector is known as a Faraday cup. Now let's look at the maths. We're going to assume all potential energy from the electric field is converted to kinetic energy and all the ions produced are only singly charged. Because of these assumptions, we can express the energy of the ions only in terms of kinetic energy, a half mv squared. The kinetic energy is known as the strength of the electric field is set by the instrument. A half is just a constant, and we are trying to find the mass. This just leaves velocity. We don't know the velocity, but we can rewrite it as distance over time, because the length of the flight tube is known, and we can accurately time how long it takes an ion to travel down the drift region to the detector. This means we can rewrite the equation substituting d over t squared for v squared. This now just leaves the mass to be found. The only quantity being measured is the time, hence the name, time of flight. To finish, let's recap the whole process. The sample enters the instrument in the gas phase and is ionized by a stream of high energy electrons. This can result in fragmentation. An electric field accelerates these ions down the drift region and they separate with the heaviest traveling the slowest and the lightest traveling the fastest. A detector registers these ions and sends a signal to a computer. This information is then displayed graphically with the mass to charge ratio on the x-axis and percentage abundance on the y-axis. The most abundant fragment is set to 100% and the other peaks are leveled against this. In this case the parent ion is the most abundant, but this is not always the case.